And we're back on the ladder. So we have this three zone unit connect to a package unit. Got no heat for the office over there, which is zone one. Um, but I'm not feeling any heat coming out of any of the zones. So I have this uh, HZ432, so I'm just gonna make sure the dampers are working first and then we'll go check out the furnace. So here we go. <laughs> Okay, so currently all zones are calling for heat and fan. It's calling for heat. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna push this here and we're gonna go into checkout mode. Okay, we're gonna go to next. And there we go. So we wanna make sure that this actually closes. Yeah, it's moving. Yeah, so I think, the, I think there's a problem with the furnace. Now, of course, nothing's labeled. And the only reason I know what zone is what is because I labeled it quick way. You disconnect the common for each thermostat and you see which one turns off and you can figure out which one goes to what. So I went ahead and did that on all three of them because this is three zones and labeled everything. So, And then once I have the unit number, I'll probably label the unit number on here. So anyway, uh, let's go on the roof and uh, see what's going on with this thing. So I found our unit. I put it in air conditioning mode. That's why I came up here, because I figured it's uh, 44 degrees, no one's gonna be running their air conditioner. Uh, so this is a quick way to help you find your unit. Because again, nothing's labeled. It doesn't look like anything's labeled up here either. So I will definitely put the suite number on here. So these are really nice trains. They actually have handles. And check this out, scope this out, look at this. Holds it open for you. Why aren't they all like this, seriously? All right, so I have the system in test mode, so you touch t test one to test two. So right now, and that will bypass any calls from the thermostat, which it did. Uh, so we're, right now we're on fan. This is gonna open the economizer. And then uh, this is gonna close the economizer and then turn on the air conditioner. And then this is gonna go give us heat. Your fires. Okay. Inducer turned on for a second and then cut off. Let's see if we have an ignition board in here somewhere. And okay, we got a light. One, two, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we got six, um, six flashes. So we're gonna, here we go. Six flashes. It's probably not it. No, that's the economizer heating. Here we go, six flashes. Ah, flame rollout open. Okay, let's see if we can find it. We got one rollout switch back there. Yeah, well, we got it out. It's not a self-reset. It does have a button. Oops. Uh, yeah, there's a button, so yeah, it was definitely tripped. Okay, we're gonna pop it back in there and we're gonna light this guy and see if it actually rolls out. So we got our rollout reset, we got it reinstalled. Ah. Go ahead and turn this back on and call for heat. All right, we're cycling heat, producer's on. gas pressure. The gas pressure is super high though, it's at 4.21, so that could be the issue. And again, we're gonna let it run for a little while just to calm down, because you can see it's already dropping a little bit. All right, so it's just been running for a little while. The gas pressure is definitely high, it's at 4.2. We don't wanna go past three and a half, so I'm gonna start cranking it down. Okay, she's been running now for a little while, and she's stabilized about 3.4. I'm gonna leave it there. The burners are making a weird noise, so uh, I think I'm gonna check this uh, heat exchanger just to make sure. It has been burning really high. There's a hole, there's a hole, there's a hole in the bottom of the heat exchanger. Let me know in the comments if you know that song. So yeah, we got a big old hole right there. 
Uh, that's probably what that boop, 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 boop noise was. So that's not good. So yeah, I got to disable the heat. That's a bummer. Anytime you put in a new gas valve, new furnace, set the gas pressure. I know you're gonna say, oh, it's set at the factory, but if the incoming gas pressure isn't the same as what it is at the building that you're installing it, doesn't matter. Set the gas pressure every time. We got our heat exchanger, we got our unit, we got snow everywhere. So we're gonna go ahead and swap out the heat exchanger. So um, I've never done it on one of these units, so not 100% sure how it comes apart, but I think I have a good attack plan. I'm gonna start by getting that top piece off we'll disassemble the whole burner assembly and then just kind of figure it out from there so uh, yeah hopefully this will save you time uh, if you have to do this one by watching me totally take stuff apart that doesn't need to be taken apart <laughs> so anyway uh, let's get on it all right so we're gonna take off this lid um, so I gotta take all these screws off but I'm gonna have to disconnect the, the outdoor fan motor because it's attached to the top as you can see uh, so we're gonna I think those wires are in this bundle so we'll chop this open and figure out which ones black brown and purple so that's our brown that's our purple and our black one is right here on line one it's this fat one right here so we'll get those removed i looked at it from the back side and i could see where the screws are coming in so there's two on this side three on the top and two on this side so that's going to be right up evaporator coil that's fine i have uh ratcheting wrenches i think i can get to them that way um, there's two here um, and then there are three so there's these two here and then there's one kind of in the back a little bit so uh, we got to find that but I think the ones that I located are the two front ones and then there should be another one kind of towards the back which might be that one I'm not sure yeah because they're not exactly lined up so I'm definitely going to have to take this off which is a bummer um, it looks like this star, this little nut thing that adjusted is broken. So that's, that's lovely. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and get this off. Looks like it's four bolts. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what size they are yet, but uh, I'm pretty sure it's one of these. You know, I gotta say, I was a little worried about this thing for being too long, but it hasn't really been an issue. And when I really needed a smaller one, I end up having to use a wrench anyway. But uh, Klein, thanks for this. This thing, this thing is awesome. It has been so convenient. Okay, so I got two screws here. I don't know where that third one is. I really hope it's not below this. That would suck. Actually, I'm wondering if this is even them. Because it looks like it's raised up. I'm gonna have to take this whole plate off. That's lame. screw there there's a second screw there and that's the third one okay so this is total bs so that one's fine but there's one in between there's one in between this box and the evaporator coil pan i have no idea how i'm getting to that because it doesn't look like this will fit so we shall see i'll start with the easy one first okay so we got a 516 ratcheting wrench here <sighs> we'll be able to get that out no problem um, I don't know if I'm, this is going to fit between the evaporator coil pan and this, so yeah. Our screw is in between there, so I just remembered one nice thing about train is if you take this off, right, took off that middle bar, I had to take this off so I could unscrew that, right? You can actually pull the entire pan out and replace it that so now i have access to that screw which is right there come on focus you get the point so that's a nice feature so anyway let's go ahead and uh get that stupid screw out still a pain in the butt to get to but doable now nice all right so we got two more screws it's that one there and that one down in there Look at that, this is probably the second easiest one. Actually, no, this is the easiest one because I didn't have to take anything apart to get to these screws. Just a regular panel. All right, now let's see if this one, oh yeah, we can get into it. Sweet. 
cool. So now we got to take off. There's like a little bar thing attached to stuff on the back side. We got to get that out. And then we should be able to just pull this thing straight out. We're on the back side here. Um, this is where I was able to see where all the screws were. It looks to me that I don't have to do anything because I'm looking at it. It should just stay in place. However, these might fall down in there. So I might just stick this panel under it so it doesn't fall down, uh, down in through the supplies. All right, I'm gonna try pushing it around from the back side. Aha, I see it, there's another screw. Looks like in the front of this, for this panel, right there and right there. So I need to get that off. All right, let's go check the back. Ah, see, this is why I put the panel here. Okay. All right, we got her out. That was a total pain, man. Look at how bad this thing is. It has two major holes on this. One right there, one right there. Dang. All right, so this is gonna be kind of an issue to get that in there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide it in there and then go to the back and then kind of pull it into place. That's, that's the plan. We'll see if it actually works out that way. So let's get this thing in there. Okay, we got all the heat exchanger screws in. So we're gonna start reassembling this and then going from there. So I'm gonna start by putting the, this, uh, what do you call it? The shelf back on. I'm gonna reassemble the burner assembly before I put that back on. I feel like there'll be more room that way. Oh yeah, another thing too is these things, these little white things, there's this metal thing that holds it on, it popped out. So just make sure you didn't lose it. So since I got the whole burner assembly out, I'm gonna go ahead and clean the igniter and the flame sensor. It doesn't look like it's been done for some time because it's a pain in the butt to get to. So we just need to put the panel, this one here, this one here, and then we also need to put it in the shelf. I'm gonna do the shelf first. Just because with these panels out of the way, it makes it a lot easier. Alrighty, so we're gonna go ahead and put this back on. So we got our four uh, half inch bolts here. Mm -hmm. We will adjust that later. Wanna get this all put back together first and then uh, we'll go, go ahead and finish that off. Alrighty, so we got it all put back together. All the screws are in there. Um, so we're ready to about, about ready to fire this up. However, however, this is a brand new heat exchanger. There's oil on it. It's gonna smoke like crazy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this panel off when I first fire it up. I'm gonna show that panel in there, but I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna let them know because sometimes this can set off smoke detectors and stuff. Um, but I'm gonna let the tenants know that we're gonna fire this up and it's gonna blow a bunch of smoke, but I'm gonna put that panel underneath it. So hopefully most of it will just come outside. And after it runs for a while, we'll take that out when we get to go. So, and then I'll probably just stand in front of this because it'll be nice and warm because it's getting cold up here. <laughs> so here we go. So here goes our, uh, our heater. Gas is on. It might fail to ignite the first time because uh, this is all full of air. So, or it might kind of ignite funky. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, stand over here just in case. All right, we got ignition. So yeah, we'll let her run for a little bit, get that smell out of here. Ooh. All right, so she's been running now for probably a good 15 minutes. She still stinks. All that stuff coming out of there was actually smoke from all the oils and stuff. That's gonna happen on a new furnace or a new heat exchanger, so you wanna burn that off. That's why I have that panel off on the back. It's just to kind of get all the smell out. Uh, then once I... Uh, once uh, the smells kind of dissipate, because it stinks. I, you can't smell it, but it stinks. Um, I'm gonna put it, you know, turn it off, put everything back together and run it on the inside and just make sure it doesn't overheat or anything. Let it run for a little bit longer while it's blowing heat inside instead of out here. But uh, definitely got my hands nice and warm. Uh, but anyway, hopefully this helps you out. So thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe, comment, tell me what a horrible technician I am. Hit that bell notification and follow me on Instagram and Facebook. And if you want to support the channel, uh, visit my Amazon store and pick up some tools for yourself. And if you like the socks that I'm wearing, which I'm wearing them right now, pick some up at uh, Camel City Mill. Thanks for watching.